Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook Y'all. Welcome back to our channel. We're back with this week's installment of What's for Dinner. We've got some easy weeknight meals for you guys and some pantry meals. Hope you enjoy the video. I got out my crock pot one morning and took out a bone-in turkey breast I've had it in my freezer for a while. I mixed up a spice rub and also some onion soup mix and chopped up some onions. This is a recipe from Six Sisters Kitchen that I'll leave a link for. It cooked all day in the crock pot and it smelled delicious. I spared you guys me trying to get this out with my bad hand. It is absolutely falling apart. It has been in the crock pot probably about nine hours. Don't know if we'll be able to use it for sandwiches or if it'll cut that good, but it has absolutely fallen apart. I'm going to take some of the liquids out and make a gravy. This is the way I've always made gravy. I take either olive oil or butter or most of the time a combination of them, melt them, and then add an equal amount or an eyeballed amount of the same amount of flour. I stir it around with my flat whisk. A regular whisk never works for me until it's the consistency of little pebbles of sand. And then I start adding my liquid. It needs to be hot and not cold out of the refrigerator. This was still hot from the crock pot. A little at a time until it starts to get to the right consistency. I cook it a bit to get that floury taste out and I did add some more water. Another pantry meal for me. I had this um, turkey breast in my freezer since probably either right before or right after Thanksgiving. I found it on sale and stuck it in there. We didn't get to it at Christmas. Just now getting to it all day long in the slow cooker. I'll leave a link to the recipe that I used. Some canned green beans, some mashed potatoes I did in the microwave, some cranberry sauce from Trader Joe's. Then I took equal parts of butter and oil and made a roux with flour. Used the drippings from the crock pot once I strained all the bits out. Put some salt and pepper, made some gravy. I'll show you a picture of our plates. That's what's for dinner tonight. I've had a lot of eggs in the house. Tim is still eating them every morning for breakfast, so I got out my Instant Pot pressure cooker and did four eggs for dinner. And I'm waiting for the pen to drop, still my favorite part. You do five minutes on high pressure, five minutes natural release, and then five minutes in an ice bath. And these are hands down the best peeling eggs I've ever had. Uh, they're great for making deviled eggs, which is what I'm doing tonight. Cut them in half, take the yolks out, mix up, just some basic ingredients. I did a squirt of mustard, some mayonnaise I don't even measure, some salt, pepper, a little bit of my favorite Morton's Nature Seasoning. Sometimes I put pickle relish, sometimes I, I don't. I didn't this night. So I just filled them, topped them with some paprika for, for dinner later tonight. What happens when I make deviled eggs and turn my back? Just for the record, I made eight and Tim is threatening to eat one. So if there's one missing at dinner time, we know who to blame. Thief. You have a dog at your feet. Who wants food? Maggie. Maggie is the sweetest dog. We were so glad to have her again. It is time to take some of the turkey and transform them into different kind of leftovers for tonight's dinner. I had some, I bought some King's Hawaiian rolls and chipped up about two cups of the turkey meat. I got out my 11 by 17 Pyrex dish and spray the bottom and the rolls were soft. They came apart, but no worries. I started layering. The original recipe, which I will leave a link to below, did not have mayonnaise or mustard, but I'd made them once before and they were a little dry. So I put mayonnaise on the bottom and then the turkey and then some more of the jarred cranberry sauce from Trader Joe's. The original recipe had you use Swiss cheese. I didn't have that. I used mozzarella, which is what I had. I put some grainy mustard on the top half of the buns and they fell apart too, trying to get them back in the dish, but no worries. Just like a hot ham and cheese, you mix up a butter sauce. I melted some butter. I added some mustard, some Worcestershire sauce, and some dried onion, and layered the top. Got it ready to go in the oven. While the oven is preheating to 350, I'm gonna let the butter mixture soak in. We'll cover them with foil. They bake at 350 covered for 20 minutes. Then we're gonna take them off, sprinkle them with Parmesan cheese, and bake uncovered an additional five. So 25 minutes total in the oven at 350. Do they need to sit a little longer? 
They're going to sit in my belly. You're getting four? I was going to get two for me and four for you. <laughs> All right, well, I'll eat four then if you yeah. want. So, using the leftover turkey, we've made turkey cranberry sliders. I made some deviled eggs. Tim's got some chips. He's starting off with four sliders. I will pro. That is my egg. I'm starting off with one slider. I might come back for a second one, but I've got deviled eggs and some fruit on the side and turkey cranberry sliders is what's for dinner tonight. It's what's for dinner tonight. Is that supposed to be funny? I'm ready to eat. I'm combining three cups of water and a jar of marinara or some other kind of pasta sauce. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and add a half a box of lasagna noodles. We're gonna make a skillet lasagna we do have a full recipe video on this, and I will leave a link to it in the iCard above and also in the description box below. I did end up using the entire jar of marinara sauce. I used about a half a box of lasagna noodles. You can use oven ready or the traditional ones. At this point, when you mix up the mozzarella and the ricotta, you are supposed to add the Parmesan. You'll see in a clip soon that I forgot it. I did use ground turkey, but you can use ground turkey, ground beef, whatever you like in this recipe. It's very versatile. I have cut it in half before. I did not this time because I wanted some leftovers for lunch. I seasoned all the layers, the sauce mixture, here the meat mixture, and also the cheese mixture. I used basil, oregano, garlic, onion powder, some Italian seasoning, some salt, some black and white pepper. So you add the meat into the sauce and the noodles. I added a little bit more seasonings and now we're going to dollop in the cheese mixture and then cover it and let it melt. It's not pretty. It doesn't cut like a oven lasagna, but it has all the flavors without running the oven for an hour. Guess who got busy and scatterbrained and left out the Parmesan cheese from the ricotta mozzarella cheese mixture. So if this doesn't taste as good as it normally does, it is only the cook's fault. So we're gonna sprinkle some on top and hope for the best. So we're keeping it pretty simple tonight. I did a skillet lasagna rather than stick it in the oven and I made us a big salad in keeping with the Italian theme. I did use Parmesan and mozzarella cheese as well as some olives and some cut up pepperoni. We will split that and have a big serving of this. I'll show you a picture of our plates. That's what's for dinner tonight. Working on a pantry meal for tonight. We are in Lent. This is something I would eat year round. I can usually only get away with it during Lent. Instead of salmon patties, I'm gonna make tuna patties or tuna cakes. The first thing I've done is take half of a package of stuffing mix. If you're making the full recipe, you would use the whole box. I just use half for the two of us. I am soaking it in some water just to soften it. And then I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. Go ahead and make the tuna patties and get them in the refrigerator to firm up. I have always pan fried these in a skillet and a little bit of oil. We're gonna go out on a limb and try them in the air fryer tonight. To the softened stuffing mix, I added the tuna, some diced or grated carrots, some cheese, you can use any kind. I just used what I had on hand. It was some Colby Jack, then some mayonnaise, some chopped up pickle, and I always like to add some pickle juice. I do use my favorite nature made seasoning and some salt and pepper, and then get it all mixed up. I like to do this earlier in the day if I'm able, and form the patties and get them in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes to firm up before I cook them. We have already shown a video on this. I know a lot of y'all like to watch them here, but I will leave a link. It's one of our most popular videos. It's called Four Easy Meals. In addition to these tuna patties, we also show you recipes for our sloppy joes, some chicken souvlaki, and our eggs in purgatory. I was mixing up my patties, and I think I got a little too much water in the stuffing mix. Um, if I was working them in a skillet, I could probably do them okay. I'm not sure since I'm going to do them in the air fryer, so I am going to, I'm going to put the mixture back in my mixing bowl and add some breadcrumbs and try to firm it up a little bit more for the air fryer. So not only is this a pantry meal, it is pretty cost effective. I took one can of tuna, a half a package of just the store brand stuffing mix, and we will get seven tuna patties out of that, so that's pretty 
budget friendly. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator and let them chill for 30 or 40 minutes or more. You can make these up in the morning and have them ready when you get in from work. And they will hold together better if you pan fry them in a little oil or bake them in the oven or we're gonna try them in the air fryer. Also in the same recipe video as the tuna patties is an easy tartar sauce. I only have mayonnaise today. If I had plain non-fat Greek yogurt, I would do half plain yogurt and half mayonnaise. Mix it up with some salt, pepper, pickle relish. I like dill. You can use whatever you've got or you like. Some lemon juice and some dill seasoning. Make a quick tartar sauce to go with the patties. I've only ever pan fried these tuna patties. I have never done them in the oven, so I don't have a time and temperature to use with my handy oven converter that converts things from oven temperature to air fryer temperature. So I am just going to fly by the seat of my pants. I've also never put parchment paper in here. I know they sell it on Amazon and I've seen other people use parchment paper rounds in their air fryer. I'm gonna try the first five, spray them with a little olive oil. I'm gonna start them off at 360 for four minutes. I have no idea how long they'll take. I'm just gonna have to keep adding. That's the beauty of an air fryer. I can pull the basket out anytime and check them, but I will leave a note. This is after four minutes on 360. I think I'm gonna do two more and then flip them. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the equal amount on the second side. After six minutes on the first side at 360, I've flipped them, I've sprayed them. I'm gonna put them back at 360 and check them after four. So that'll be a total of 10. We are fixing to test and see if we like the tuna patties from the air fryer as much as we like them when I pan fry them in a skillet. This uses a little less oil. Hopefully they're a little healthier. This is a good Lenten meal and a pantry meal for us. We're gonna have a little bit of tartar sauce on the side and I made a really big salad. Trying for that to be the focus. We'll eat more salad hopefully than tuna patties. This is my one of my favorite salads. It's a harvest salad with apple, walnuts, chunks of cheddar. I did add some carrots and red onions and it's got cranberries. And that is what's for dinner tonight. I'll show you a picture of our plates and we'll leave a comment as to whether we like these from the air fryer or if I'll go back to doing them in the skillet. These were good and I would definitely do them in the air fryer again. They were softer, but a lot less greasy. And if you can't tell, this is more my kind of meal than Tim's. Tim and I celebrated our wedding anniversary this week. Even though I cooked at home on the actual day, he very sweetly offered to take me out on date night. I think he had another reason. He really wanted a ribeye. So he had a ribeye baked potato and I had grilled redfish with a cream sauce and some lump crab meat. Y'all, it was so, so, so good. March 14th is 3.14, which is pi. As a math girl, I love this day. I'm also a Star Wars girl. I like May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Kroger was running uh, pizza pies from their deli for $3.14, so I grabbed us one to have on pie day. We do have a couple of frozen pizzas in the freezer, but I thought it was a pretty good deal. As I do with every pizza, I'm going to jazz it up. And after, I have to add a few more toppings. Pizza pie, chips. Tim has these Zaps. They're out of New Orleans. Spicy Cajun craw taters. Craw taters. Craw taters. Fine china. That's what's for dinner tonight. That's going to wrap up this week. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all have a wonderful and truly blessed day. Bye.